The LP Dutton Trout Hatchery and the New England National Park are about 50 minutes east of Armadale on the Waterfall Way and just under two hours west of Coffs Harbour via Ballingen and Dorigo. So Stacey, tell us a little bit about the history of the trout farm when it started and whereabouts the fish go from here. Right, yeah. Um, so we actually web LP Dutton Trout Hatchery and that's from Les Dutton. He actually had you and Dangie, you and Dangie, sorry, out on the Ebor Road. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, and he and a couple of mates decided to get together and um, decide that they, yeah, there's no recreation, there's no fish about that they wanted to catch. Um, so yeah, they've started the process of actually getting them in here. So all your trout are actually introduced species. Um, and yeah, they started out there and they ended up moving it here in the 50s due to the, the reliable water source. So you've got the beautiful Serpentine River out yep. there. Nice. Um, and yeah, so we now, um, we, we supply fish from just south of Tenerfield down to Oberon, Bithgo, that whole area. Everywhere nice and high. So yeah, around about your sort of your 800 elevation. Water needs to be cool. Yep. The trout don't like, yeah, probably over 18 degrees water. Yep. Um, and yeah, we do a few drops down sort of Cower and Gold in that area. Um, we've got a sister hatchery down at Jindabyne and that south area, we sort of, yeah, both cover that area down there. Um, and so you introduced the rainbow trout throughout all the different waterways up high up here. Yes. Are there any uh, like carp, those sorts of fish, do they get up here as well or are they a problem up here? Yeah, yeah. carp are a problem everywhere. The redfin are becoming more of a problem. Right. Your redfin are really big. They hunt as a pack. Yep. And they, the, they hunt like piranhas. Yeah. They hunt as a pack and they're making a mess and they'll wipe out everything. Where your carp destroys habitat. The red fin, which is European carp, is taking out everything. So they're actually, you'll see as you go down, we've actually just got a new shed over our, our raceways. Um, and yeah, we're waiting for the next lot of funding and that to come through. They're gonna be turned into recirculation systems. So we can keep the fish through the warmer months because we have troubles up here that the water gets too hot and it's too hot up here. Yeah. So with the recirculation systems, we'll be able to chill the water and keep them nice and cool and we'll be able to grow them up bigger because they're finding that the bigger fish, bigger trout, have got all the redfin babies in their bellies, which is a great thing. Oh, right, yes. good. So, so you start, to start combating back. Um, the best thing about your, your trout is that they don't breed naturally. There's just not the numbers for them to actually breed naturally. So, you know, where your redfin have got no problems breeding naturally. Yeah. So yeah, if something comes up and they decide that they don't, well, just stop releasing them a couple of years, people fish them out. Yeah. Yeah, it's sort of a, one of those natural combat yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Awesome. This was a great opportunity for Scott to pick up some beautiful smoked trout to take home for later enjoyment. At the beginning of your tour of the trout hatchery, you will enter the aquarium room. This is a great room. We really enjoyed this, particularly where Stacy was feeding some of the fish, like the bull rout. Well 
I was amazed by this albino eel. It cannot see, but it smells to find its food. the hatchery they collect the eggs and the sperm from the adult trout and they go through a rigorous process of putting those together and as the eggs are fertilized they continue to grow and then they're put into different stage tanks and they just keep growing and growing eventually those fish are released into all the different places that Stacy explained you can see all the different size fish in the cooler months of the year, it's a great time to come and feed the fish. The day we were here was a very warm day in the summer. The place wasn't fully operational and the fish were rather quiet. So the cooler months are the best times to come and feed the fish. These are backup roof stops that we happen to run into a drought or we lost all our roof stops up the back we've got these ones here. Ah, right. There's 138 in each tank at the moment and they're all around about two and a half kilo. They go in about one and a half and they come out about two and a half, three kilo. So they'll be, they'll be harvested from that tank next month. So because of other predators down in the wild, yeah. especially in lakes and that sort of thing, we, um, we've done some research, we've been tagging the trout at all different sizes.
Just a further 10 minutes down the road along Point Lookout Road from the Trout Factory is the New England National Park. This is a great place where you can camp, you can go out on hikes, there's some great scenery, some great views from here. There are also some fantastic waterfalls which we didn't go and see today, but we recommend you check them out. So here we are up at Point Lookout. Uh, there are two lookouts here. We're on the second one. Uh, this is beautiful and shaded. This tree here is just a beautiful backdrop um, overlooking all the mountains. Um, the National Parks are here at the moment. They're doing a big cleanup. We had a bit of a chat to them and they do a big cleanup once every 10 years or so. So the place looks really, really nice. Um, there's lots of bird life here. Uh, we haven't seen any other wildlife, but it is the middle of summer and it's, it's lunchtime. So, uh, Point Lookout, beautiful place, two great lookouts. There's a good amount of parking, good amenities here if you need the toilet, you know, have a picnic lunch. So it's amazing the people you meet on these uh, walks. We just met two, a couple who supply coffee from Sydney all the way up here to Armadale at the Black Cat Cafe, which is thriving. So great to get out see some beautiful scenery and meet some new mates. So after a great day at the Dutton Trout Farm, we bought our cooler and some fish. So this one here is traditional wood smoked trout fillets. So I'm gonna try those and just see what they're like. So these are fine to eat straight out of the pack. The heat in the smoking process has cooked them. So you can just open the pack and just eat them just like that. Mm. So you can smell, but you can taste that smoked flavor and the trout is just so soft, so tender, it just melts in your mouth. This is beautiful. So for Dino's up in Black Mountain, Dino's smoked trout, this is absolutely amazing. So uh, if you're thinking about buying smoked trout, go to the Dutton Trout Hatchery or you can contact Dino's through his Facebook page or website. Beautiful.